communities and businesses. I'm your host, Dr. Srikant Sola, CEO of Vedic Earth. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Saroj Kumar Sahu, Assistant Professor at Utkal University in Bhuvaneshwar. Dr. Saroj Sir did his PhD in Atmospheric and Space Science from the University of Pune. So he's really smart. And he followed this by his postdoc in Germany. And then he said, well, I want to study some more. So then he did another postdoc at the National Institute for Environmental Studies in Japan, where he continues as a guest faculty. His areas of interest include ambient air pollution, air quality monitoring, and chemical transport modeling, which means how does pollutants and other chemicals move in the atmosphere. Uh, he plays key roles in, in several very important government projects in India, such as the National Clean Air Program, which aims to improve air quality uh, across several cities, many cities by more than 25% in the next few years. And he's also part of SAFER or SAFER, which is the system of air quality and weather forecasting and research, which helps us to understand how air pollution weather and other um, atmospheric events interrelate. And this is a very important for us to understand how good is the air in our cities. So Dr. Saroj, sir, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Sri Srikant, for a nice uh, introduction. Uh, but we're so, really happy to have you with us. And, uh, thank you. and uh, please, uh, as I was saying, please don't mind if I have a good cup of tea while we chat. Definitely. But I want to start with uh, something that everybody has been affected by. Let's start with the COVID pandemic. Um, we've all faced multiple challenges in these times. India, fortunately, is getting better, um, but many parts of the world are doing worse now due to the uh, Delta variant. The United States, uh, part of Europe, uh, many countries in South Asia, and Japan, which has its highest level, level ever, right in the middle of the 2020 Olympics. Now, there have been a lot of studies that have looked at the association between air pollution and COVID rates. And you've really done a lot of work in this as well. Can you help us to understand this? What's this association and what's important for us to know? Yes, um, like uh, in this last what we published, what is the very, uh, what is the relation between the COVID and the air pollution? We did a very national wide Pan India studies that uh, establish a very good relations between the emission load, that is a fine dust particle emission load and COVID cases. And we, this is very interesting. And for this, we utilize three kinds of scientific data. One is the national emission inventory, which is very uh, important to understand the sources of air pollution and mm -hmm. its magnitude and what are the anthropogenic or natural processes are involved with this that can be addressed through your inventory. And the second one is the COVID cases as per the government uh, data and the air quality data over 16 stations that also we utilize for this kind of studies. And what we found the, that the city with the high, high fossil, fuel, fossil fuel based anthropogenic activity are experiencing lot of uh, um, PM 2.5 emissions load and that is a very good correlation with the COVID cases. That is okay. very interesting. Okay. So people who are living in the cities, because in the city you will find more kind of anthropogenic activity where more fossil fuel will be burned. So mm -hmm. these people are more susceptible to this kind of COVID cases. And uh, and what we found also, India has around 750 districts and out of 750 districts, 20% of districts, around 150 districts, which, uh, which contribute near about 56% of particular particular 2.5 emissions load and mm -hmm. also experiencing near about 70% of COVID cases. So there is a very strong relation between COVID and PM 2.5 emissions load. So this is a very interesting finding. And before pandemic also, we are uh, very much aware that uh, prolonged exposure to this kind of dust, small dust particle like PM 2.5, it has very serious and adverse impact on your upper respiratory inflammation and COPD, mm -hmm. asthma, or any kind of a lung disease. So it is very well known that your dust of small size has a very adverse impact. And moreover, your COVID also target this same reason, same kind of disease, and that will lead to aggravate the conditions. So we can say that the exactly. air pollution can be, can, can be a catalyst to aggravate the COVID cases. 
And so, the, so on the one hand, you're saying that that um, well, two things. First is that relationship between air pollution and other types of diseases. That's exactly why uh, I got into green technology because I was seeing too many people, young folks, dying from heart attacks and other forms of heart disease, literally right in front of me. And I said, there must be something more I can do than just you know opening their arteries with uh, angioplasty operations all day. And that's how the technology that became Davic Earth was born. But you're saying that beyond just the heart attacks, heart disease, lung disease, cancers, and all the other things that air pollution is known to cause, it's also known to make you more susceptible to COVID. Uh, then the next question is, if you live in areas where air pollution is high and you get COVID, is the COVID infection worse? Are you more likely to die from COVID in these polluted areas? What was the associations that you looked at? No, definitely the thing you see, uh, I cannot say, I mean, th those kind of studies require more clinical studies. Okay. And uh, yeah, definitely COVID, uh, COVID will be aggravated if you, if you are, the person is already exposed to the fine dust particle for mm -hmm. longer times. Right. And uh, that is the, that is the uh, kind of things we have to understand. It will just like a, act as a catalyst. Yes. I cannot say that it will mean lead to some kind of fatal or death. I cannot say, but definitely it will aggravate the COVID situation. And if your lungs is not in good condition or if you have already have some upper respiratory health issues, then that will definitely COVID will I mean kind of has a very fatal output. Okay. Uh, that makes sense because, you know, studies have shown that lung function, for example, is impaired in children living in Delhi or in other parts of North India where pollution tends to be worse. So that, that totally um, is understandable. You know, if you're breathing a lot of air pollution, it will damage the upper airways of the lungs, the lower airways, the respiratory tract, and uh, in some cases can even reduce immunity. So all of these things together can make one more susceptible to air pollution. Now, one more thing I would like to add, mm -hmm. since yeah, this um, uh, PM 2.5 is a small dust particle, it's uh, because already WHO declared COVID as a airborne. And uh, this particle, particle of small size that can sustain in the atmosphere for longer time. And that will act as a carrier to transmit mm -hmm. COVID from one part to other part of the geography. So that can really act like a carrier also. So if you have more small size of dust in the atmosphere, that will be a disaster. That will be transmit the COVID much faster. Right. I remember when the COVID pandemic started, we were spraying everything with a disinfectant solution. And now scientists say that's no longer necessary because the primary mode of transmission is airborne aerosol transmission. But uh, PM10 and PM2.5, the principal microscopic particle pollutants that cause damage to the body, also act as a taxi so to speak, for, for these COVID viruses. Now, so air pollution makes COVID worse, but air pollution by itself is often quite bad, especially in countries in South Asia and especially in India. What is it about India specifically that makes air pollution such a difficult problem to control? Is it geographic conditions like what you get say in Los Angeles where you have the mountains you know, limiting the dispersal of, of certain pollutants? Is it population density uh, in densely uh, populated areas such as Mumbai, Delhi, and so forth? Is it tendency towards crop burning from agricultural practices? What is it that makes uh, Air India have 22 out of the 30 most polluted cities in the world? Yeah, you're right. I mean, air pollution is a very emerging problem across the globe. And in India, it is much more worst. Because mm -hmm. as per the WHO record, it is uh, well established that out of 100 most polluted city, India, 37 belongs to India. So most mm -hmm. of Indian big city are already polluted. And traditionally, the transport sector and the industries are the dominating sectors which contribute huge amount of pollutions because of lack of advanced technology. That is one okay. thing. And apart from that, most of this industry is confined over a very limited geographic regions. And that lead to also, again, aggravate the situation in a particular community or very population is very affected when you have more number of sources in the particular region. Apart, apart from that, India has a very specific problem like crop residue burning. That is, again, it's a big problem. The people living in slums, that is another problem. Because if you go to the Mumbai, there are 50, 50 lakhs plus 
people are living in the slums and they do not have access to the different uh, your lpg connections so they are using some kind of other mode of solid fuel to to cooking activity so this kind of problem is confined over india and moreover road condition in india is also not that good so that lead to more dust load in the indian road also when the vehicle fly on the indian road that lead to resuspend of same dust to the atmosphere and we inhale that dusting that has also huge adverse impact apart from that uh, india has a waste uh, treatment is another area where we need to focus because we are we are not able to manage this huge waste that is been generate every day tons of uh, generating in each city so these are some uh, country specific problems apart from that of course the technology is a big thing which need to be improved in each in every industry like uh, i will give a example like coal industries in last 10 years if you see the coal um, most of the upcoming coal power plants are ultra super critical technology that's in more advanced ultra very, super critical super yes, critical yes. okay ultra super critical technology and this technology is far better than the uh, your low or the super critical technology so this will uh, improve the efficiency of the plant as well as uh, reduce the coal consumption so that will lead to less pollution to the atmosphere so these are very so uh, like india in case of transport sector transport sector also uh, as government is taking a lot of uh, uh, many policy changes policy to discard all these aging vehicles that is again is big problem in most of the cities so uh, that is also happening uh, through different uh, government schemes so these are a couple of things uh, but uh, there are many more uh, unorganized industries which is lying across the country and they need to be checked because they are polluting much more it's going to big uh, industries that's exactly right i remember one of our customers is in uh, haryana north of delhi and uh, it's a university where they don't make pollution on their own obviously it's a university but they're surrounded by hundreds literally hundreds of brick kilns and the best technology for brick kilns today is this uh, zigzag technology where the chimney zigzag, right. uh, the way that the coal is burned the air has to move in certain ways and basically it means that the if you have a zigzag chimney the coal burning is much more efficient and the amount of pollution released is far less uh, but i didn't see any of those yeah, I mean, when type I, of installations uh, around this university and their pollution was quite high i mean these are students young people who are uh, breathing yeah. in polluted air every day now yes. um, just to our audience members who are watching this we would love to hear your questions and comments so please type them into the chat box a member of our team will relay them to me and that uh, we'd love to hear your questions and comments to the doctor sarod sir now we mentioned different areas like you mentioned how in mumbai you have certain issues like um, 50 lakh people 500000 people 5 million people sorry living in slums they don't have access to um high quality cooking fuel so they use um uh solids biosolids and other form biomass uh, burning excuse me for their fuels which are very polluting especially an important cause of indoor air pollution but from the work that you've done you've also showed that the type of air pollution varies from one city to another which makes sense because we know that pollution is different from one region of india to the, another just as it's different from one region of the world to another but looking at how this uh this this variation occurs what does that mean for how we tackle uh improving air quality yeah it's a very good question see the sources and magnitude of air pollution that vary from city to city the problem lying in one city may not be the problem in other city so you have to find what exactly the problem in a particular region like the transport transport and the transport related dust load is the major problem in delhi that may not be the problem in other city like ahmedabad or pune or other cities so you have to find out what are, what exactly because pune is loaded by the high industrial regions so in that case we have to look for the how industries can be uh, industry can be i mean controlled the emission can be controlled so for this the city and the regional specific emission inventory is required to identify the sources the each sources has to be quantified 
so that we accordingly we have to make a city specific policies and management of a mitigation strategy we have to make city is, specific is this it what you call it is this what you call it an emissions inventory so we're yes. figuring out where all the pollution is coming yes. from in that particular right. area okay yes. okay so uh, under the ncap program also there are around 127 cities serving and uh, city we are developing uh, inventories and uh, each city has to be uh, quantified what are the major sources maybe some sometimes the cooking activity is dominating in some uh, some cities and some cities as a industrial pollution some city has a transport pollution so you have to identify what exactly the problem some some city has aging vehicles so that also lead to like if you go to calcutta the although the city has a very limited vehicles but the road congestion is a big problem so in that case we have to see so like that you have to target each and every city to identify the sources and once the source is identified and its magnitude accordingly we have to make the policies or some kind of strategy to combat the combat the any air pollution issues okay so every city has its own particular issues and they need to be tackled uh, with the best practices uh, tailored to that particular scene and i'm sure climate would also have a, a difference uh, dr suroj right because if you look at areas such as um, uh, let's say kerala versus other areas such as um, as kolkata you know the climates while they do have some similarity there are some quite stark differences versus say rajasthan um, areas in jaipur for example so how how does that get handled in terms of geographic variations is there are there specific uh, approaches when we say okay in jaipur we might have dust storms delhi certainly has had issues with dust storms does that change the approach or do we yeah, need no. that graded approach like what delhi has how does that matter when we say okay i'm in delhi versus jaipur versus uh, kerala how does that change things yeah definitely with your geographical uh, changes the uh, your climatic factors also changing so in that case uh, some city experiencing more precipitation in a year as compared to some other cities so in that case if you're uh, if you are experiencing less precipitation like like then your soil is likely to have less moisture content and that lead to resuspend of dust into atmosphere is likely to more over the ahmedabad rather than the kerala because in ahmedabad is the dry condition okay. lead to more resuspend of dust so there are some um, variation in with time as well as reasons that's a good and that's a good that makes total sense now and that really does change our approach right it can't be a one size fits all approach for every city because every place is unique now you've had the chance to look at to work in rather uh, academia to work in government and to interface with the industries and here i'm coming from the industry side previously i was in academia uh, what do you see when it comes to air pollution control making the air cleaner for everyone what do you see are the possible intersections between uh, academics government and industry how can we collaborate better uh, definitely some good collaboration is required so that uh, new science can be come out but this kind of uh, the collaboration is very lacking or limited over indian geographic regions so uh, definitely uh, there is a need of research based product or technological development to combat air pollution related issues and we have to work together and we have to involve more universities more national laboratories to carry out some kind of target and problem oriented research rather than some fundamental research you have to do some problem or target oriented research rather than the fundamental research that will be helpful so that we have to come up with some kind of solutions so definitely industrial participation is highly essential at this point of juncture and uh, i'll be happy if uh, industry will be uh, involved uh, in many universities and many new re researcher uh, to harness their knowledge and come out with some good science that's great i know i mean this kind of collaboration is so important you know david earth for example we worked with uh, the indian institute of technology kanpur iit kanpur with professor tripathi and his group yes. um looking at how our next generation technology is able to affect uh, microscopic pollutant particles including what is called nanoparticles really really small particles of pollutants as small as as covid and that was uh, very groundbreaking for us really interesting work can be done when we put our our heads together
Uh, for those of you who are watching, if you have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to enter them into the chat box. They'll be relayed to me by our team, and I'd love to uh, share those questions to Dr. Saroj. Now, looking ahead, you know, looking into the future, if you had a crystal ball for the next decade or two, uh, Dr. Saroj, what do you think is the future of air pollution control in India? Where do you think things are going to go? See, the future looks very robust uh, because uh, this is a very emerging problem in India. And uh, definitely, uh, but at the same time, because it's a big challenge also, because mm -hmm. large number of people are very sensitive to air pollutions. Their health is getting deteriorated with uh, this kind of carcinogenic effect or some kind of asthma related issues. So we have to be very careful. And this is a big challenge for medical fraternity also. Yes. So yes. this is high times. Uh, definitely, there is a need of better emission control technology that industry has to adapt. And each industry is also looking for a very cost effective, very cost effective, better solutions. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is also required and we have to come up with that kind of technology and solutions so that industry can afford it also and at the same time we have to be very careful the type of fuel or uh, and access to the quality or advanced technology is also important because sometimes some industries they do not have access to this kind of technology they are not aware of this kind of technology available mm -hmm. in the market so we have to sensitize this kind of industries that we have some kind of devices or some kind of technology which can reduce the emission at the source so right. that will indirectly reduce the uh, so putting some kind of stress on the environment so definitely we, uh, uh, some kind of better solutions is highly essential at this point of time. And India is one of the uh, highly populated uh, country where the air pollution making disasters uh, mm -hmm. in terms of health impact. So hopefully some better solution is likely. To I come. hope so. <laughs> but you know, you mentioned three things that are really close to my heart. And I'm not saying that just as a cardiologist, but that, you know, that first awareness has to be increased of the available technologies, because there are a number of great technologies that can help us to improve pollution at the source or improve hard to control sources of air pollution, like fugitive emissions in, in factories and industries. Fugitive emissions for our audience are, are pollution that comes not so much from the chimneys or the, 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 that you see uh, in factories, but just in terms of the normal day-to-day -day work. So for example, if raw materials are dumped like coal, some coal dust will be uh, generated and that generates additional pollution. Those are called fugitive emissions. So technologies to handle that. And you also mentioned cost. Do you see cost coming down with, with increased awareness or in terms of the economic effects? How do you think that's going to play out? We've, we've seen this with coal, for example, in coal thermal plants where the cost of upgrading thermal plants was very expensive. Um, yes on a per plant basis, not on a per unit of electricity basis, but certainly on a per plant basis. Do you see that coming down in the future? Do you see air pollution control becoming more affordable? Is that something that's on your radar? <laughs> it's very difficult, but uh, we have to see for some kind of solutions, which is very cost effective. And mm -hmm. so that uh, industry can adopt it. Even a small scale industry can adopt this kind of technology. Suppose some bakery industry, they have budget a very limited budget and mm -hmm. in that budget can you provide some kind of device which can control the emissions so that will yes. be very useful so we have to design such as we have to you have to divide we have the technology should be target oriented so which kind of industry requires some kind of solutions so accordingly so uh, some kind of uh, advanced technology is required you know, I have seen from my own observations of working with the um, hundreds of industries now across the country that those industries which embrace sustainability as part of their way of working, whether it's in terms of air pollution control, um, improving uh, water uh, security in their communities, uh, improving access or, 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 or the availability of renewable energy, use of renewable energy for uh, their facility, these type of industries, they do better. They have better profits. They're more likely to succeed. They demonstrate sustainability to their customers and customers are choosing industries and businesses which have demonstrated sustainability. And that's a big shift that I think that maybe 10 years ago or even five years ago, we didn't, we didn't see that as well. Now I'd like to end with the question that um, 
uh, before we go on to our last question, we have one from Anurag Rao at JSW, uh, JSW Paints. And he says, how can you one go about aligning the goal of tackling air pollution with the UN carbon footprint goal? I think this is a great question, Anurag. So the question is, how do we uh, align the goal of tackling air pollution control with also the same goal of reducing our carbon footprint? How does that work? Yeah, definitely. See, to achieve any kind of goal that has been to reduce the uh, carbon footprint, and definitely we have to reduce the emissions by 20 to 30 percent with adopting better technology only, better technology and better mm -hmm. fuel type also. So these are and with the improving lifestyle also that can be controlled. So that was expect we have to see. Uh, how can you like uh, many industries like coal industry coal technology has improved significantly in last 15 years i can say, say. Mm -hmm. and that has reduced the greenhouse gas by 30 to 40 percent wow. what our estimation says so and it is in line with what we have given commitment to the uh, international body so it's a very good achievement by government that they are adopting better technology in case of power thermal power productions so similarly other steel industries to your cement industry they also have to adopt some kind of better more efficient uh, where the fuel consumption will be reduced drastically. So that, that will lead to some kind of uh, decrease in greenhouse gases. And uh, what I believe. So air pollution control and reducing greenhouse gas emissions really do go hand in hand, right? Right, um, right. There's an interesting article that was just published uh, showing that uh, there's a strong relationship between greenhouse gas emissions and death due to uh, events that are triggered by greenhouse gas, whether they're due to heat waves, like what we saw in yeah, Western United States and Canada, uh, floods, like what we saw in yes. Maharashtra state here in India, or in Belgium, Netherlands, and Germany just a few weeks ago. And the study found that uh, three people living in the United States, their carbon emissions or their greenhouse gas emissions would cause one death somewhere in the world due to uh, climate crisis or climate yes, change. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, so, it's a very, very good, good thing because of climate, the extreme event is likely to be more intensified and you will see more uh, flash flood or any kind of extreme re uh, rainfall event in uh, different cities and more heat waves. So these are the side effects of the uh, climate change. And uh, right. we have been experiencing all the across the world facing the same challenges. So definitely air pollution has to be controlled to minimize the greenhouse gases. Um, because this goes hands on I, I guess wherever you see air pollution, there's going to be greenhouse gas emissions, right? Yeah. They, they go hand in hand like that. So yes, hand in if hand. we can control one, we can to some degree uh, minimize the other. Uh, great. Now, our last question is as an individual, because I always like to end with, you know, the, the individual picture. As an individual, what can I do to reduce my contribution to air pollution? What would you suggest? Definitely, uh, uh, every individual has to spread the awareness among the other citizens, the how the impact of uh, air pollution is used, because many laymen, they do not understand the impact, the uh, long term impact of the air pollution. So we have to sensitize the people about the impact of indoor air pollution, as well as the outdoor air pollution, because sometimes because indoor air pollution is a big problem in India also. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the air quality in, in, inside a room may be the three to four times more hazardous than the outdoor. So we have to sensitize the people that uh, what is the consequence of this air pollution. And we have to encourage your public uh, transport systems, which is which is very good. That will reduce your uh, greenhouse gas emission. Also, uh, I believe that flexible of, I mean, working hours, flexible office working hours also mm. has to be adopted by the Indian context so that because already in foreign foreign country they are uh, using this flexible office working hours that also India should uh, um, adopt and uh, recycling of waste and other uh, crop residue related management has to be very efficient one because yes. uh, people are not aware of uh, what will be the consequence of crop residue burning so we have to give some kind of um, how to um, handle this kind of residues so the, what could be the end product so that they should not go for burning this residue. So we have to find some kind of solutions for the, these farmers. 
Now, Dr. Mohammed Yassin, who's assistant professor at the GM Institute of Technology, had a question which you, you touched upon. He's asking how to tackle indoor air pollutants and um, how does that affect the humans and the environment? So how do we tackle indoor air pollution specifically? We focus a lot on air pollution in general and on outdoor air pollution. Uh, and we touched on biomass burning um, and other things. Any other thing, any other, you know, easy uh, solutions, you know, arrows that we can See, send to yeah. reduce air pollution? <laughs> Uh, see, indoor air pollution is again a very uh, highly dependent on your lifestyle. Your cooking activity also emits a lot of different kind mm -hmm. of aerosols. At the same time, if you are going, you are uh, burning some kind of incense sticks or mosquito coils. That also uh, also reduce mean generate lot of emissions or greenhouse gases or chemical toxic chemicals. We are not aware of this kind of things, but we generally use, and we have to try. We have to live in a place where there should be very proper ventilation so that the air can disperse this kind of indoor air pollution very easily. But in the Indian context, people are many people are living in the slums who do not have a very proper ventilation. So it's there the indoor air pollution become very, very high. And uh, there are many studies which says that sometimes the indoor pollution could be five to ten times much more worse than the outdoor air pollution. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful about uh, doing any kind of, even say smoking cigarette in, inside a room also, that is also very uh, adverse impact. Oh, you just okay. told the cardiologist about smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Suroj. It's really thank been you. a pleasure having you on our show. And Same here. Uh, we have so much to learn from you. And uh, we hope to uh, see you again very shortly uh, back on our dis to, to discuss more with you. Thanks so much. And thank you so good much. evening, everyone. We'll see you next week on Speaking Sustainability.